is actually the blog on October 25th, 2002, where how it came to be, which is which is really cool. Um, so I said, the past few days have seen a remarkable change happen in my classes, especially in my 40 student first period of class. I decided to delegate some responsibility to a few chosen TAs or group leaders. I have concluded that trying to explain something to 40 students just won't work. Having the class in the computer lab doesn't help either, but I like it, they love it, and it does give us more options and flexibility. So my plan is to explain everything new to the nine TAs. I am using the little whiteboards and dry erase markers every day so we can share information as a group readily. When they get it, they can go back to their group and give the same explanation. I also coach them on how to teach, and it's amazing to me how quickly they have learned to come up with their own examples, find a simpler problem, and so on. What I love best about this process is seeing some of my students at their best. There's no thought about grades or about getting by. They're completely entranced in the challenge of teaching. I plan to ask them for feedback on Monday, but I can tell they like it. I, I can also tell that the other kids are much more attentive. I am almost jealous. How come I don't get that type of captive audience? I think the key is that in a group of three to five, they can actually ask questions and get individual attention. Um, there have been some surprises. One TA decided she couldn't do the job and luckily another student uh, joined her group and took charge. Other groups in my third and fourth period decided to send a new student to be the TA each day. This definitely takes care of the inequity concern and allows everyone to work in the situation they find most comfortable. So these days, if you come into my classroom, you will see students working together, at least six or seven conversations about math, people explaining things to each other. I hope it lasts, the TA's idea. So what I did is for like three days, we had like a TA discovery process where I gave a quiz and like I, I gave them all, um, all um, you know, voting basically like a ballot where they chose who, who should be TAs. Mm -hmm. And one of, one of my proudest moments, so there's this one guy who they had missed the quiz and but everyone told me, no, he should be a TA. So I just took it on faith and I named him a TA based on, on his classmates saying so. Mm -hmm. And then when I was, I would walk around when they, uh, when they were in groups and, and I'd be like, hey, does anyone actually need me? <laughs> and uh, and I, I went over, like I, I, he was helping, he was teaching. So I went over to be like, to give him some, some, some help. And he's like, Miha, I, I got this. You know? <laughs> hey, hey, wow, <laughs> what a gift, you know? What, I'm, what I want to do now is actually create alternative systems. So my vision is Oros, one room, one world schoolhouses, which is a community of communities of learning, basically. And with one of my mentors, who I'm actually going to visit tomorrow here in Asheville, North Carolina, I really loved, he, had, he even had this picture of the community and the school is like an amoeba that kind of goes like, that's kind of like shape inside the community where there's it's not like separate and it's, and it's like deeply woven in. And Charlie actually taught at the school in DC that was a community school where they would just go around being like, hey, do you have something to teach to adults? And where do you want to teach it? So they would put things on the calendar and the, if the kids wanted to learn glass blowing, they would get themselves to the glass blowing shop on Tuesdays and, and learn glass blowing. So it's stuff like that has been done or like, so community schools is, is, one, is one idea. And, um, one room, one world is the idea of one room schoolhouse is the community and you have intimate relationship with people like, uh, and then the, the one world is the idea we can learn together. You know, I can teach programming if we have a hundred Oros schools, right? Like, and somebody in, you know, where I'm at in Asheville, let's say wants to learn programming and be like, Hey, I'm teaching programming. Like anybody else interested from any of the 100 schools and they can opt in. So we can kind of like combine somebody else might be really good at writing. And, and, and once again, you can combine things as, as long as we can kind of visit each other, like do conferences or do like, you know, have the Vermont kids going down to Florida in January and have the Florida kids come up to Vermont in, in July. That's part of the vision is to have a more, more flowing system where they get multiple experiences while still having that uh, core core group. And then the model I would choose for those schools is still, I mean, actually that's what I was just talking to. Um, there is a school in Vermont that we're looking at possibly starting this fall. We have a one family and I have one staff, potential staff member who's really interested. So we were just talking about putting together a little, a little packet for parents. We're like, what are we trying to do? I'm like, well, I don't know exactly, but I know that I really love the Sudbury, the Sudbury school model. 
but maybe we do Quaker business meeting instead of de de uh, instead of uh, Robert's Rules and democracy uh, voting. You know, maybe we do um, like I don't I don't know how to bring a little bit more structure into that wild kind of overall total freedom of, of Sudbury. I think I always felt unsatisfied with the job I did and. I was partly unsatisfied with myself as, as a, like a 22 year old with no real life experience going straight into a classroom. Like I spent the first year and a half probably trying to just do what they told me and like don't smile till Christmas, that like bullshit like that. They need to respect you and not like you. Um, but then as I started uh, learning, you know, reading more about education and getting about the system, then I like I just couldn't do enough to protect the kids from the from the damage that system causes, um, and I I got to the point where I just stopped assigning homework. I was just like, okay, if I can't, I, I don't know what the balance. I didn't know at the time what the balance was between like structure and and freedom. So I was just I just gave them freedom. I can give them a little bit of a respite from the um, from the the challenges of school. Um, but I, and specifically, I think there were some kids who were the troublemakers who I really liked. They were smart, um, challenged the system, and they would get destroyed, especially in the public school system, but not only. Private schools were not that much better. So a lot of them were like black boys, you know, and they were just, I could see how they could potentially have answers to the things that our society needs, but they were the ones who were going to get screwed over. So I've always been wondering, like, can we create something where actually that initiative, like those like intelligence and individuality get, get um, supported? Um, so, you know, I, I've, I kept reading about education. I was a tutor for a couple of years after I left uh, the school system. And then just about 11 years ago when I was doing some men's work, I, I, the, my life's purpose came to me to reinvent education. And I was a dance teacher at the time, so the so within a week I created a, a whole new way of teaching dance, where instead of instead of one one teacher and twenty students, I had ten friendly advanced dancers who I invited, and they said yes, and ten beginners, and we spent the whole day. I made sure that everyone gets to know each other, and there was this like one-on-one -on -one instruction the whole day, and people both community wise and learning wise it happened so it's, it's kind of similar with the tas right it's, there's a there's a thread of like student-centered education which comes from also reading carl rogers on student-centered in, in you know unschooling books so so there's a theory but also there's a practice in there and the practice is always how can i make myself smaller how can i let the kids you know or the students in case they were adults do more um, so, so I worked working with adults and then I was just driving around the country and I, I drove by this farm in Vermont and, and hearing that I was into unschooling the Nico, the, the, the father who had already unschooled his older kids was like, so do you want to start an unschooling school in my barn? And at the time I was like, well, shit, okay, well, do I? And I was like, well, maybe not one school, but a hundred schools. Yeah. <laughs> The thing that that I went went to look at is the panel with with kids, because huh. when we met, I, I showed you my mentor's imagining learning project where he actually listens to teenagers, put up put forth a vision. So like the fact that you had a you know um, a panel of of children speaking was was the most um, important thing to me. The, the other piece is the the ecology part, and that is something that comes up a lot. And in, in when my mentor talks to kids is the sustainability and, and you know, ecology.